Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sandeep. Um, I joined Microsoft and VS Code team um, in 2016 as a senior software engineer. Um, personally, I love, uh, I love doing sports. Um, I started playing cricket and badminton as a kid, and now I play tennis. And uh, during uh, winter, I love to do skiing. And my um, every, every, um, every season sport is running. Uh, so welcome to the VS Code day. So, okay, so what, are, what am I going to talk today? Um, so my, I'll, I'll be, I'll be um, <clears throat> talking about how, you, how VS Code can improve your day-to-day uh, -day experience uh, during programming. And um, so I would be, I would be, I would be uh, uncovering and showing off some of the cool and, cool and awesome features of VS Code, which will, which will enhance your productivity. Uh, so what, what's going to be my agenda? So I already introduced myself and uh, my agenda is pretty simple. So I'll be doing a live bug fixing uh, that is there in VS Code using VS Code. So during this, I would be uh, showing some of the cool features uh, that helps my workflow. Um, so after that, you can hop on to the um, next session. Okay. Um, Kai and Eric already talked about uh, the end game in the previous session. So currently, currently we are in the end game week. And during Endgame, as, as uh, we already heard about, we do testing uh, of our features and we do uh, fixing of the bugs that come from come out of the testing and we, we verify and at the end we write release notes. So here is our Endgame notebook and um, here are the um, uh, bugs which are assigned to me for this uh, in this Endgame. Today is the fixing day, so I would uh, probably have want to fix this uh, bug. And then at the end, I have a couple of um, features to which I have to uh, document and write release notes. So today I'll be focusing on two tasks. One is um, fixing this bug assigned to me. And then um, also if I have time permits, I will probably do some uh, release notes and I would like to leverage this time to fix uh, the bug. Okay. okay. Um, so the two tasks as I said are the fixing the bug, which is in the VS Code repository. Um, and the second bug, uh, second task is to um, uh, write the documentation, which is in the, which is in VS Code docs repository. Um, so I have I have here uh, VS Code brand new VS Code insiders. So first of all, I would like to set up my VS Code insiders, VS Visual Studio Code, for these two different projects. Um, so these two different projects are um, these projects are two different projects which needs different environments because VS Code project is um, is involved in coding. So where I need code code related extensions, whereas VS Code uh, documentation project is all about documenting which needs uh, different kinds of extensions. So how can I set up uh, VS Code for these two different projects. So uh, as you know, uh, for this specific scenario, we have come up with um, a feature called Profiles. So let me see how Profiles um, will help me here. I'll go to the uh, Profiles menu and create a profile, and then pick the end, pick uh, creating an empty profile. And I will use this profile for uh, coding, which means that for VS Code the repository, and I name this as coding, um, and then, uh, the profile get, got created. So you can see on the bottom uh, left in the gear icon. So we show the profile batch, which means that this profile uh, is now in coding, um, coding mode. Um, so basically one other, one other uh, advantage of uh, empty profiles is also, is also that you can use it for uh, testing or you know, for reproducing some bugs because the empty profile doesn't have any extensions or any customizations. So you can always use it for different purposes. So let me set up this profile, coding profile for my um, uh, VS Code repository. So let me go and open the VS Code uh, folder, which I have um, uh, cloned. So I open my uh, VS Code folder. I will, um, yes, yeah, so it just open. Let me give a couple of seconds to, um, Yes, so I'm ready for this recommendation. So you can see on the bottom right corner, we, we got a prompt ask, uh, showing that um, um, showing that you know there is a, there are recommendations for this repository, and let's see what those recommendations are. Yeah, so these so we have we have got these recommendations for this repository, and to to let you know where these recommendations have come from. So when we open this VS Code repository, so we have this. Um, uh, File in this vs dot vs code folder, we have this file where it listed what are the what are the recommended extensions when somebody opens this repository. So that's where we are getting these uh, recommendations. 
and I would go and install uh, some of these recommendations which are helpful for me during this demo. So um, I'm installing ESLint, um, GitHub pull request and issues extension and notebooks extension and test provider extension. So these will be helpful for in, in the next couple of uh, uh, minutes during my workflow. So I have now uh, my extensions uh, set up. Uh, let me close all tabs. And uh, and did you re did you remember that you know we got the notification from here? And I don't want any further notifications uh, from now on because I'll be I'll be coding I'll be in coding mode and I don't want to be get distracted. So I will turn on um, um, I, will, I will turn on this do not disturb mode, which means that so no further notifications will come in will come into my face. Um, so now I have um, set up the extension. So the next thing what I would like to do is um, change and show how I uh, change the theme of my uh, editor the way which I like. So I'll go here and then change the color theme. So you know that we have uh, VS Code comes out of the box with this default uh, with this uh, themes. And um, so you can browse through them and the background, uh, you can see the preview. Um, not only that, you can also go to the marketplace. So you can see the first button, which says browse additional color themes if I click on it. So what we do is VS Code goes to the marketplace and searches for the themes, and then you can browse through them. And if you closely observe uh, in the behind, behind the scenes, as you browse, we are applying the theme and previewing the theme without even installing. So that's pretty cool to know how the theme looks even before installing. And now I will go and install the theme which I like. Um, theme which I like is GitHub Dark. So I have a GitHub Dark theme and let me install that. So this asks me to install the extension. So with a, within a click, I, I preview the theme and install the theme. That's, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so now I have set up my, my um, extensions. Now let me um, uh, go to the Explorer view and see what I would what I would need in more. Okay, so if you see in the Explorer view, I have a couple of um, sections like outline and timeline. This, since I have a small screen, um, this is actually making my Explorer view cluttered. I would like the outline and timeline views in the second in the in the on, on the right side of my editor. Let's see if it, if I can do it. I will just drag, drag and drag and try to drop it on the right side. So now there is the new um, sidebar on the right side. We call it secondary sidebar, and this is the most uh, requested um, um, feature. And then we have um, we have we have done it recently, and then have it make a best use of it. And I would also like to move the uh, timeline view here, and also I have this. Um, uh, Test Explorer view, which I also want in my secondary sidebar. Okay, so I have set up my layouts a little bit. Um, and if you see, once I drag my Test Explorer on the secondary sidebar, all my tabs here went into this drop down menu because we have too many menu actions. I would like the tabs to appear and don't, and don't mind if these menu actions are hidden. So, how, how can I do it? I can just say right click here and say hide these menu actions. So most probably I would not be using them a lot. So I would hide them. And then I got uh, a nice simpler view. And also on the activity bar on the left where I have where my mouse is, I would like as few icons as possible. So I would like, I would hide extensions because I am done with setting up extensions and I will also hide this specific view. Okay, now I am kind of set up um, my uh, profile for uh, VS Code project. And let's go and set up the profile for documentation project. Uh, let me jump to the um, other window where I have opened the uh, VS Code documentation project um, in VS Code. And I would like to set up the, uh, set up the profile for this project. And um, do, I don't wanna go through all these steps which I have done. Uh, I would like some recommendations. So what, what I'd like to do is I go here and say profiles and create a profile. And you can see there are a list of already um, defined profile templates, uh, which are, which comes out of the box. Uh, so this is a new feature, which is there in Insiders, and we'll be releasing it in uh, next table. And there is a profile template called Doc Writer, which I would pick, and then it shows what, what contents the profile has. I would uh, create the profile. Um, so we have the extension and everything listed here. And let me create the profile and see what happens now. So this is uh, installing all the extensions and it changed the theme to a light theme because that, that comes from the template. 
and my doc writing project is set up just within two clicks using the using the using the built-in profile templates so that made my task pretty easy and fast okay so now i've set up both my um, vs code project and vs code the documentation project using profiles let me go back to the um, vs code project and i would like to do the next step so what next step is that you know if you remember in the beginning i said i would like to fix a bug and what is the bug i want to fix yeah so here is a bug which i want to fix um, in next next couple of minutes um, so there is a there is a report saying that you know we have a configuration api uh, to the extensions and extension who is using this configuration api and getting this array value from this is mutable which means that I get a value which is array and then I try to update the value and try to get this value for the same key, I'm getting the modified value. So that's not how the API shall work. So we should not um, have a mutable value out there. And that's what user reports and let's see whether whether this is um, a, this, re, this is really happening or not in VS Code. Let's verify this bug in VS Code. Uh, so the way I do is I'll go back to my uh, VS Code uh, project and I know that um, this specific API is implemented by, it is tested by a class called uh, expose configuration dot test. So this is the, this is a test class, which actually implement, which actually I have test cases for this specific API. And okay, one thing before, one thing I would like to mention before going into the details, um, I would like, uh, since I have a small monitor, I also want to have more editor space, I would uh, first, try to hide the mini map by right clicking here and hide the mini map so that I get more space. And I also uh, want to enable auto save because now I'm trying to write some code and I want this code to be automate, uh, to automatically saved. So let's enable auto save. Okay, so now coming back to the business. So we have this test class and it, which has test, which has tests for uh, this API and how can I run these tests and see this test? So as I said, in, um, if you remember in the beginning, we have we have installed a couple of extensions. One of the extensions is um, um, test provider extension, which is here, and this provides a test uh, view for this test class. Let me open the secondary sidebar view, and then here you can see all the all the tests listed in this um, in all the tests listed in this project, but. This is really uh, not so helpful, but I want to see the test listed for this specific file I opened. I can quickly go to the filter here and then say, show the test in active file only. Now I can see the tests listed only in this file. That's pretty helpful. And now let's see how, what the state of these current tests are. I'll quickly run them and see if everything are running fine. Yes, so you can see that all tests are green. So which means we are in a good state to start. And first of all, what I would like to do is I would like to write a um, unit test uh, and check whether whatever user reported is uh, happening or not. Uh, I'll quickly jump on to this and then copy the unit test. So I have a unit test cop already so that I will not, uh, I'll, I'll save some time during the demo. Okay, I uh, have this unit test, so which actually does what exactly user is reporting. So I, I create an API object and I try to get the value for this specific key. And then I try to have update and I update the value, return value. And then I try to get the value again for the same key and see that if the value is not changed, even though I updated it line 778. Let's quickly run this test and see what the test says. Okay, so the test fails. It means that we are getting a changed value and whatever user reported is, uh, Correct, and, with, and, and now we need to fix this test. Sorry, fix this bug. Okay, um, so there is also one more thing which I would like to uh, mention here is that uh, you can run, you already have seen that I can run this test from within the editor. I can also debug the test. For example, I can keep a breakpoint here and then right click here and say debug, which will debug the test, which will run the, which will start the test in debug mode and then stop at the breakpoint. Okay, so this is a good tip to you. And now let's go to let's go and fix the um, fix the bug. So where shall I fix the bug? And if you see the uh, name of the test, uh, name of the class, it says expose configuration dot test, which means that this is a this is testing the, the file called expose configuration. And we need to check the API get configuration. 
So let me open ext host configuration. And then I want to jump to the method called get configuration. Okay. So did you observe what ha what what happened here? Is that I I typed the file name and also typed the symbol name. It immediately took me to the um, uh, navigated me to the file and symbol quickly. So this is a pretty quick way to if you want to if you know the file and the symbol, you can quickly um, type that using the syntax I showed, and then you can go to that specific method directly. So here is the here is a method which is actually um, implementing this API, and let's go a little bit uh, deeper. And here is the get method of this object, and and if I scroll down, I think I'm losing the context of where I am because it's it is a very big method, and then it is uh, having too many nesting. So what I would need here is some kind of sticky scrolling which we support by enabling this feature from settings. So we have this uh, sticky scrolling feature. Let me enable this and let's go back and see what happens now. Okay, when I scroll, I know in which context or which scope I am in. So this is pretty useful in finding out uh, uh, which method or which sub function I am in. So now let's, uh, I would, for better readability, I will um, probably um, pull these guys. Okay, so here, it is a get method. And so whenever uh, I'm returning something here, I check if it is, um, I, I, I return a clone on write proxy. Uh, here inside, I check that if it is, um, so here, if it is an object, I do some clone on proxy um, a magic. Otherwise, I just return target. So let's see whether uh, what is ease object doing here. I can I just uh, press command and then hover on this, and I can see the inline implementation. So it says that this function is returning false if it is an array. Okay. So which means that I'm not returning any clone or clone or a proxy if it is an array, which I'm returning target as it is. So that way that lies, that where the bug lies in. So I let, let me quickly fix that by checking if uh, the it is an array. I will return clone of it. Okay, so now I make sure that whatever I did, whenever it is in, Whenever the value is an array, I return, I clone it and return it. So let's go back to the test and see if it is really fixing the bug. So I'm going back to the test and then running the test. Okay, so I see the test is green, so it fix, so it's it fixes the test and it means that we have fixed the bug. So let's 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 go to the next step and what we need to do afterwards. So now we have a test case and we have a bug fix. And what what next to do? What is next is to quickly review the changes and uh, commit to the brand, com commit it and push to the repository. So if you observe on the on the left side of the gutter, there is a group, there is a green line. Let me quickly click on it, and this green line opens a peak view. And if you see this peak view, this shows a diff of the chain, diff of the diff of, diff of the changes. Okay, so this is called peak diff. And it's really helpful when you want to quickly check the diffs within the editor. And since this is a simple addition of the test case, I I I simply stage this stage this change from here. So we have a button here, and I can also stage this change from here quickly. So let me stage this change, and then I'll go back to the uh, implementation file where I fixed the bug and stage it in a different way. So I'll go to the SEM view and I open a quick I open the complete diff editor and see the change and change is also pretty simple and here if you notice there are some buttons in the middle uh, which says a right arrow which says to click which says click to revert change let me try this out this is actually reverting the change this is pretty useful when 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 you are having too many diffs in your uh, too many changes in your in too many diff diffs and then you want to do partial undos for example Let's say while I'm testing, I have a console log statement. Hey, VS Code day. 
And, and now I come here and then I want to see, I'm reviewing the change and then, hey, I want to remove this console log statement because I was just using for testing. I can just quickly click on this and it will revert the change. So this is pretty handy feature to undo changes partially. Talking about the changes, uh, we also have um, um, a, um, a timeline view. Let me show that quickly. So there is a timeline view which actually shows all the changes that are um, that are done to this file over the time. So these changes can be local or remote, and you can always go through these changes and understand how um, this file is built. So there are also local changes which will help you in uh, reverting back uh, the changes you have done or you know uh, restoring the changes if you, you lo lose the changes. Okay, so now let me um, stage this change, stash this stage this change uh, from here. I let me select the range and then I will stage the selected range from here. This will stage the change and we can confirm this. Yeah, so all the changes are staged. And now what is next? So I need to, now, now I would like to commit these changes and push to the repository. But before doing that, um, Let's explore a little bit of UI, what we have here on the bottom bottom left in the status bar where I'm hovering the branch name. So there is a lock icon next to it, which means that this uh, branch is, uh, this branch is locked or, you know, this branch is protected and I might not be able to commit changes directly. I would need a PR workflow to push changes to this deposit, to this branch. And let's see how VS Code may help me Will help me in in achieving this workflow. So I will try to write a um, commit message here and let me see what is a bug number is. It's uh, one six double three eight three. So fix uh, the bug and then if you see there is a drop down and there are actions contributed to the drop down. One of the one of the action is commit and create pull request, and these actions are contributed by the extension GitHub pull request and issues extension which I have installed in the beginning. So let me so let let me create this let me commit and create the pull request and we have got this uh, branch name. Um, so let let's let's understand how this branch name has come. I will undo this and then go to the settings and say branch. So there are a couple of branch settings which enable this feature. So there is a branch prefix which will uh, which let me uh, have a prefix here. So this will add this prefix to uh, the branch. Which I'm going to create, and then the branch protection setting will let will let will let VS Code know what branches are protected, and also these settings will actually uh, start this flow or show this flow where it will show the pick picker to create the branch, and also come up with a random name. So let's go with the flow again. I will do this commit and create pull request, and then uh, so you can see that I have this uh, prefix and then a random name. Uh, let me enter. So it will take a moment because we will be doing the uh, hygiene checks in the background. Have patience. Hopefully this will finish in a moment. Yes, so we have uh, committed, we have created a branch and then uh, there's a create pull request uh, section view or form. And um, the only thing we need to do is we say auto match and then create the pull request, that's it. Okay, I also say always publish branch so that I will not see this prompt again. Okay, this will create the uh, pull request and it will put this, this will put this pull request in our um, uh, automated pipeline. So one of us, one of the team members will come and actually review this change and approve this and immediately it will, once it gets approved, it will immediately um, get into the, um, merged into the um, main branch. So this makes all the, all the workflow like, you know, so creating the branch and committing to the branch, very easy within, within just three clicks in the UI. Okay, so we are just one minute. I would not go into the um, uh, documentation writing, but what I would quickly mention about is a feature called setting sync. So now I have set up uh, VS Code and VS Code documentation project with different profiles and customizations. How can I back them up? So we have the setting sync feature. When you turn on setting sync, so I sign in, turn on, and then I um, use my GitHub account. So this will sync all my customization into the cloud. So whenever I get a new machine, I can pick, I can quickly set up my uh, new machine using by just turning on setting sync. All my customizations will be synced. So this will be pretty useful 
um, even when you are working on multiple machines to sync your customizations across. Um, I think I just have a few more seconds. I, um, so this one, I would like to show how VS Code is helping. Helping this code will help help and make your make product cute in your uh, workflow. I hope uh, these features will um, uh, will be useful for you in your day to day workflow. And if you have any any um, questions, feel free to reach out to me in my uh, GitHub handle or Twitter handle. And happy smart coding. That's all from me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sandeep. Sandeep gave uh, ways to reach out to him. Also, we have a few questions right now for uh, for you. Uh, could you uh, tell me a little bit more about profiles and remote development? Like code spaces, can it, do they work the same? Oh, yes. So profiles work in every, every, every product of VS Code, not just in VS Code desktop. They also work in code spaces and also work in VS Code uh, dev, which is, uh, uh, which is a web-based edition. Um, yeah, so it's it's available everywhere, and you can set up profiles in um, uh, in for any environment, and they also roam across your machines. Awesome. Okay, when you, when you turn on setting sync. That's amazing. Thank you, Sandeep. Um, one other question from the chat. So you used your GitHub account to sign into setting sync when you were demoing that. Do you have to use GitHub to actually use this feature? No. Uh, so. Out of the box, we uh, provide only two authentication mechanisms for setting sync. One is GitHub, and other is you can also use Microsoft account for using setting sync. Okay, awesome. And then I think we have one final question coming in, and that's going to be: What are your favorite shortcuts? My favorite shortcut is Command Shift um, G and Command Command W. Uh, with Command Shift G is to uh, I would to actually open the SEM view. Uh, I have um, I I open SEM view more often, so I use it. And Command Shift W is to close all all open editors because whenever I have too many editors open, I want to close them. So I have this Command Shift W. Awesome. That was fantastic. And the chat and all of our viewers have been going like gangbusters. I mean, I'm so <laughs> glad everybody's been able to tune in and really supercharging your development environment, elevating your development environment is really one of the first things that you get to do when you start with this extensible editor. I'm really glad that you gave us this really great primer. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sandeep.